Welcome to the Jesus Reveal podcast. I'm your host, Zintle Mube, and it is day two. And in day two, we're looking at the baptism of Jesus. And to talk through this, I'm joined by Pastor Adrian Jacobs. Pastor A, welcome to the podcast, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Zintle. It's, a, it's an awesome privilege to be with you. Great. And, and as I've then introduced and out later to our listeners and, and viewers, we're looking at the baptism of Jesus. And obviously, it, it, it cuts across the, the Gospels. Um, I'm looking at Matthew 3, 13. And I'm looking at that conversation, first and foremost, between uh, verse 13 and, and 15, where Jesus requests to be baptized or goes to John the Baptist to be baptized. Uh, John the Baptist is quite reluctant for that to happen, but Jesus insists that it be it be carried out. So my, my first question is to talk around just the significance of Jesus needing to be, to be baptized. Okay, now that's an awesome question. Um, I think, like you mentioned, it cuts across all of the Gospels, and I think we have to reference it. Yeah. So it's Matthew chapter 3, 13 to 17. It's Mark chapter 1, 9 to 11. Luke chapter 3, 21 to 2. And John chapter 3, 21 to 22. Incidentally, John 3, 21 to 22 doesn't actually house the actual yeah. baptism, but it alludes again Indeed. to Jesus being baptized by John. So I want to answer your question by saying there are some main points about the baptism of Jesus that we would probably unpack mm. um, in this session. Um, number one, uh, when John the Baptist is requested by Jesus to baptize him, um, Jesus followed the will yeah. of God the Father. Um, this also confirms then John's role um, within fulfilling the will of God mm. the Father. Mm. Um, then we also see that Jesus is revealed as the Son of God. And, and then also, this is now Jesus starting his public ministry and how he also would then be related as the Son of God to humankind. Mm -hmm. So number two, um, also Jesus' baptism would affirm to us the doctrine of the Trinity because yeah. we see the heavens open, we see the Lord speak, we see then Jesus himself in present form, in human form, coming out of the baptismal waters. And then we also have the dove, which is a representation of the Holy Spirit. Indeed. So there's an affirmation yeah. of the doctrine of the Trinity. Uh, we also would learn that, you know, when we speak of Jesus' baptism, um, I think we've mentioned it many times before, Mal Malachi in the Old Testament closes, Matthew opens in the New Testament, mm -hmm. and you have this period of silence. Yeah. So, yes, you have John the Baptist coming out of the wilderness, preaching repentance and telling people to be baptized, but then you actually have God speaking in his own voice, yeah. breaking the silence hmm. uh, between the Old and the New Testament. But your question in specific around John's role, why yeah. Jesus had to uh, be baptized by John in Matthew's gospel. Now, it says to us um, that Jesus actually said to him, you have to baptize me. Yeah. Um, and we would expect that the roles would have been reversed. Um, but yet again, just putting into, into context who John is within the salvation story, mm -hmm. who John is within the redemption story, his role that he had to play, being the forerunner of Jesus, yeah. being the forerunner of the Messiah. So we understand then, as again, it's obeying the will of God. It's sure. obeying the the the. the purpose of God for John as he's a forerunner to Christ yeah. um, and as well confirming who Jesus is in contrast to John Indeed, because John is now pointing to Jesus as greater than what he would be. Um, John is pointing to Jesus as the Messiah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John is yeah. pointing to Jesus as him fulfilling his purpose and the plan of God. Um, so we recognize then that in case of this um, situation. John is just basically saying um, to us as, as listeners or as readers, sorry, um, now many centuries removed from that, that I had a role to play. Sure. And I am fulfilling the work of my purpose and my plan according to what God had for me in announcing who the Messiah is. Yeah. In yeah. bringing to bear who the Messiah is. Now we recognize if you go to Luke now uh, and Luke's gospel, when he speaks of this, um, John is preaching a baptism of repentance mm -hmm. for the forgiveness of sin. And if we look at who Jesus is in his humanity and as well in his divinity, 
we know he had no sin. Exactly. Um, we know that we cannot point to him as a sinful human being. Sure. So when we speak of Jesus in this manner, um, Jesus then had to go through and be affirmed, firstly within his humanity, but then when the heavens opened and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, it now confirmed and affirmed again his divinity yeah. as well. Yeah. So I yeah. hope that answers you. It does, it does. And, and just as you were also answering, I, I think there, there are many examples as well on just Jesus following order, following God's word, almost to, to the T, and even following it to the T better than the Pharisees who claim to have followed it to the T. Yeah. But Jesus follows it, I guess, by just what the letter says, but also the essence and the spirit of what God was trying to do with that, with that, with that order. No, that, that that's word. correct, yeah. because I think somewhere in the, in the, I'm not sure if it's in the Gospels or where it would be with one of the writings of Paul, um, where he speaks of Jesus upholding both yeah. the law and the prophets. Yeah. Um, and not just that, but Jesus is the full manifestation of the law and the prophets. Absolutely. So our understanding with, with that is that, yes, he will fulfill the Father's will. Um, he did not come to rewrite the Father's yeah. will. Uh, he did not come to earth for, for him to be different to what the Father has commanded or demanded of him as the Messiah. Yeah. So yeah. everything that is law-related, everything that was written within the prophets, everything that was written... Uh, within the wisdom literature of the Old Testament, even if we're looking at um, the historical books of the Old Testament, even if we're looking at the eschatological books of the Old Testament, everything that Jesus is, when we read in the context yeah, of us having yeah, him yeah. now in the historical Christ, uh, based on what we read from the Gospels of Matthew up until John is to fulfill Absolutely. the purpose of God, is yeah, to uphold yeah. the will of God, is to make sure that everything that he was supposed to be and to do in his human form mm -hmm. was to bring glory to the Father. Yeah, thanks for that, Pastor. That, that was really good. Uh, I just want to then go into then within Matthew then, verse 16 to, to 17 of chapter 3, where after he's been baptized... Uh, the, the Spirit of God descending like a dove um, and settling in on him. And then the voice of God or the voice of heaven said, this is my dearly yeah. beloved son. In the, in the New Living Translation, it says, he who brings me great joy. Yeah. So it, with other translations, in whom I'm well pleased. I, there, there are certain things that I, I would like to just discuss around God confirming or being pleased with Jesus before his ministry began. And how that has a, a significance to even us as believers, where we were justified, where we're approved by God through Christ before we have done anything except believing in, in the works of Jesus. So I just want you to just, just draw those parallels for us in, in what we see here, God's approving of Jesus before any sort of ministry takes place, and us as believers in, in, in this present time. So if you, if you take a, a step back um, and you look at the Old Testament, yeah. um, in the Old Testament, we understand that baptism has types and shadows. Um, if you do a little bit of, of digging and yeah. just a bit of your research, you'll find that um, baptism in its form of the New Testament, it might not be represented in the Old Testament, but there's types and shadows of sure. it. And then that types of shadows have to do with major events where water is signified Noah, mm, uh, Jonah, mm, mm. Um, the crossing of the Red Sea, the crossing of the Jordan. Jordan yeah, um, yeah. You know, in, in Corinthians, I think it's First Corinthians, it speaks of Paul writes to the church and he speaks of them being baptized into Moses, yeah. uh, you know, and the leadership of Moses and those kind of things that's being upheld. So from our understanding of the Old Testament and then going into the New Testament, there is a specific scripture verse that John is basically referring to. Because when John sees Jesus, he speaks of him as the Son of God. Uh, according to the book of John, he speaks of him as the Chosen One. Yeah. Um, and this is upheld for us in Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 1. It says, Here is my servant, whom I uphold as my Chosen One, yeah. in whom I delight. Yeah. Then it goes further to say, I will put my Spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. So what John is doing is, again, to uphold the scriptures. What John is doing is, again, to showcase to us that Jesus is the fulfillment yeah. of the prophetic, 
Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and everything else that is built up within the Old Testament. Yeah, Jesus yeah. is the full manifestation of that. So already we see then that before God speaks uh, from the heavens and saying, and this is my son in whom I am well pleased, um, already John is upholding yeah. um, the scriptures. John is upholding and setting in motion for our understanding that Jesus is the chosen one. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a point where John would say that he's not even worthy of uh, fastening the, 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 the straps of yeah, Jesus' yeah, sandals. Yeah. So John is pointing us to the fact that Jesus is the Son of God, but then he's also pointing us to the fact that he's the chosen one. Yeah. And as we've read out of Isaiah 42 and verse 1, it says, in whom I yeah. would delight. Yeah. So John is, again, showing the type and shadow from the Old Testament into the New Testament. And now we have this Jesus revealed yeah. as what is the theme for our, our 40 days is uh, in terms of just walking through this podcast series, is this Jesus revealed that in him the Lord has delight. Yeah. Because now going to John chapter 4, Jesus hearkens back to Isaiah chapter 61, where yeah, he says that the spirit, spirit of the Lord yeah. is upon me. And also we then see that God is affirming the work of Jesus on the earth as the Christ, as the Messiah, number one, through his baptism. Mm -hmm. And then number two, by allowing us to see this beautiful picture of the Holy Spirit coming upon him. Yeah. Not just saying that this is my son, but approving the son yes. through the yes. waters of baptism. Because you will find that the two things that Jesus instituted that is not in the Old Testament is baptism, mm -hmm. which is the, con the, the consecration of we as the children of God making a public confession yeah. of our faith in Christ, making a public confession of who we are in Christ. So we sing to the world that we are the sons and the daughters of God. So we go through this water baptism, this immersion. Yeah. And then the second sacrament that Christ introduces to us um, in, the old, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, would be the Lord's table, yeah. would be communion. And now being in remembrance of what his salvation work is, yeah. which is yeah. the broken body and then the shed blood of Christ. So we recognize then again, going back to it, that Jesus is the chosen one. Um, Jesus is not just the chosen one, he's the son of God. Scriptures uphold it. Scriptures will then further be fulfilled by it. And, Christ, and God himself saying that he is well pleased. Now how that relates to us as children of God is that we recognize that he calls us well pleased. Mm. That in our faith, if we believe who he is, going back to Hebrews chapter 11, if we go back to Hebrews 11 and verse 6, if we believe that he is yes. and yeah. we diligently seek him, then our faith is pleasing unto him. Yeah. In us accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, in us living in him, moving in him, finding who our identity would be in Christ, we are then saying to the Lord that we are now by faith qualified to be well-pleasing to him. Yeah. But then more than just our faith qualifying us as sons and as daughters of God, he is well-pleased in us yeah. as his creation. He's yeah. well-pleased in us as his sons and daughters. Um, and he upholds us then by giving us his spirit. He upholds that by making us new creatures, by making us new in him and giving us himself, giving his, us gifts, yeah, giving us yeah, the fruit yeah. of the spirit and just, you know, giving us the power um, that comes with that as great, well. Great. No, thanks so much, Pastor, for that. And I think maybe just to, just to wrap it up then, looking at all these various pieces of scriptures just themed within the baptism of Jesus yeah. to those that are listening to us, whether they're on the road or whether they're watching us on YouTube or on our various platforms, what would you like them to walk away with when looking at this passage or these passages then of, of, of scripture? I think it, it takes us back in Jesus revealed, which is the theme of yeah. this podcast. It takes us back over the 40 days of our fasting of who Jesus is. Um, placing within context of our understanding um, the work of Christ first in his humanity when he first came to the earth in terms of being born in the, in the physical form as man, the incarnate Christ, meaning that he is the full image of who God is to yeah. us. 
and then also showcasing who we should be before God. Um, so the things that I want to uphold quickly uh, for, our, for, for you and I and as well everybody watching and listening I would go back to, again, the baptism of Jesus, the significance of it as we started yeah. um, this recording would have been, firstly, it's also the beginning of his public ministry. Yeah. It introduces the public ministry of the Christ to us. Um, the public ministry and how his ministry would change the trajectory of all of humankind. Mm, mm, mm. How his public ministry would change the trajectory of our salvation and the redemptive plan of God. Yeah. The Old Testament re, uh, introduces God's redemptive plan. From Genesis chapter 12, now all the way to where we get into the book of Matthew, which is in our canon, yeah. given to us as Matthew, then Mark, then Luke, and then John. Um, we get this introduction of um, God's redemptive plan. Yeah. And Jesus now physically taking that redemptive plan within, with, upon himself and starting this public ministry. Um, you know, a little bit later we will speak about um, Jesus' miracles. There's yeah. Yeah. 37 recorded miracles. Again, breaking the silence, the silence of the 400 years. Jesus' public ministry reintroduces God's redemptive plan in full fun functioning as well with signs, wonders, with miracles, yeah, with yeah, this yeah. baptism. So all of us have to go through the waters of baptism to prove what God's purpose and plan is for us. Mm -hmm. All of us, you know, if you said yes to Christ, you have to, you have to go through the sacrament. You have to go through this great consecration of your life. Yeah. To start off and to show that now, you know, I'm starting this calling and this walk that Christ has given me. It's also secondly an affirmation again of the Trinity. Yeah. Because now we see God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in the same setting, in the same scene. Um, we see God speak from the heavens. Mm. We see Jesus the Christ in, in, in human form. Then we have the Holy Spirit descend upon him as a dove. Yeah. Again, just affirming this basic and core doctrine of the church, which is the doctrine the of the Trinity. Yeah. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we having to uphold that doctrine. We having to believe in that doctrine. Mm -hmm. We having mm -hmm. to make sure um, that the church is always built upon the reality yeah. of that yeah. doctrine. And then also, the third one I would say is, is Christ's connection to humanity. Yeah. His connection to each and every one of us. So we know that he shares in our humanity. We know that he would be broken. We know that he would give his life. We know that his body you know, would be broken. We know that the scripture speaks of him having the same temptations that we yeah. have been tempted with. So he would then, uh, number one, recognize our temptations. Mm -hmm. He would share in that, but he would not sin. Yeah. Um, and he would then be able to you know, again, showcase to the world that there's a connection to us. I've, I've heard one theologian put it this way. It's Christ showing us who God is. And I think I've mentioned that before mm -hmm. already. And then showing us who God is in terms of humanity. Yeah. But then also showing to humanity who man is <laughs> supposed to be before God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Christ is then that perfect embodiment of humanity. He's fully God and fully man. Yeah. And we have this connection with him uh, as per his humanity. And if you ask us why does it matter, so that we can take off all confusion. Yeah. Um, the baptism of Christ is a significant event. The baptism of Christ is an important event within the biblical canon, mm -hmm. but also within our acceptance of who he is. Yeah. In our acceptance of what he has come to do for us in our acceptance of him as Lord and Savior over our lives. Because in the same manner that he was baptized, we, were, we are baptized. True. In the True. same manner that, that he went through the waters, we go through the waters. Yeah. We submit ourselves. Um, you know, we come and we humble ourselves. Yeah. Uh, you know, because you'll have a pastor, you'll have a leader that will take you through the experience of baptism. The same way Christ is saying, I humbled myself to the ministry of John the Baptist. Yes. I humbled myself to the purpose of God on the earth. I humbled myself to the fulfilling of the law and the prophets. They're upholding 
hmm. of God's purpose yeah. in it all. So it is supposed to just uh, ground us in the reality of the work of Christ yeah. Uh, yeah. in terms of our lives in the church and in the world as well. Great. Pastor A, thank you so much for your time. And we appreciate you being with us on day two of our Jesus Reveal podcast. Amazing stuff. We yeah. look forward to, to all the other days that's coming. Indeed. God bless you, everyone. <laughs>